Hey, this is Greg McAfee, and welcome to The Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. Welcome back to The Greg McAfee Show, where we discuss the steps to successful entrepreneurship, how to take your business to new heights, and ultimately follow your dreams. And today, we're going to be discussing what must I give up to go up? And I'll tell you what, this is exciting. What must I give up to go up? And you know, no one likes to give up. No one likes to throw in the white towel. Nobody likes to tap out. I mean, that's a sign of weakness. So I'm going to talk about what must I give up to go up? So when we cut these things from our lives or our business, it feels like we're losing. You know, when I said uh, at one time in my business, I'm a heating and air company, when I said no more boilers, no more new construction, no more oil furnaces, no more commercial jobs, um, even when I looked at two of my, my only two service technicians, and I told them, I'm no longer going to be on call. I give it up because I cannot run a business and be on call and run run call all night. And I'll never forget their faces. Uh, but we got through it. We ended up hiring someone else and hiring someone else and hiring someone else. And we got through it. But at first they were like, oh, crap, it's now just us. So I had to give up those things to go up. And... There's, there's this kind of shame around giving something up that you've worked hard for. Uh, but giving up doesn't mean you're going to lack the perseverance. Giving up doesn't mean you're not going to gain more by giving that up. Nobody wants to be considered a quitter. And just sometimes you must make cuts to, to realize the broader vision. In other words, You've got to let go. You've got to release this in order to get to the next level, in order to get to where you want to be, in order to hit that goal. Okay? Now, in not you know I talk a lot about Steve Jobs. I just wish I got to meet him. That's, that's just one person I would have loved to meet. Him and Harvey Firestone and Henry Ford uh, and Thomas Edison. Uh, but I would have just loved to have sit down for one hour and ask them questions. That would have just been so interesting to me. Uh, but I'm glad they wrote books, and I'm glad uh, we've got a little bit of information on them to be able to decipher how they thought and what they did in business and in life a lot of times. So uh, in 1997, Steve Jobs came back as CEO from Apple. Uh, if you recall, he was fired from his own company, and it was I think it was around 12 or 14 years. He basically he, he didn't he didn't just lay out there. I mean, he was busy. He was starting other companies, and um, he started the company Next, which Disney ended up buying. Um, but anyway, he uh, he came back to a mess when he came back to Apple. Um, I think he had actually sold Next to Apple, and then Disney ended up buying it. But anyway. When he came back to Apple, it was a mess. Uh, they were on the verge of bankruptcy. They were in crisis mode. But Steve looked at everything, and he had a vision, and he had a plan, just like he did from day one when he, when he set out and started Apple. So the Apple team was unable to explain why they had so many products when Steve came back and why they were so necessary. So Steve took some of the top managers and he asked this question, which one of these products do you tell your friends to buy? And as they, as they looked around the room and stared at each other, Steve said, I just made my point. You made it very simple for me. I'm reducing the number of Apple products by 70%. Matter of fact, I think he got down to four products. Now four products out of those products, they had levels but he got down to four products. So he cut 70% of Apple's product. And people said, he's nuts, he's crazy, we're going under. Hmm. 
Okay. So, uh, um, among one of them was the Newton Digital Personal Assistant. And unfortunately, the cutbacks also resulted into a workforce reduction of 3,000 employees. Sound familiar today? I mean, Elon Musk just bought Twitter, okay? And Elon Musk just went in and laid off several thousand people. Uh, he cut the fat right away. Um, sound familiar? Yeah, oh, they, they think a lot alike. So Steve Jobs ended up saving Apple. Uh, they would not be doing, they're, they're predicted to do over 400 billion in sales this year um, if it wasn't for Steve. I mean, see, Steve Jobs saved Apple. And um, deciding what not to do is just as important as deciding what to do. Um, that was in, the, in Steve Jobs. That's what he said in his book. It's true for companies and it's true for products. Oftentimes at McAfee, our little heating and air conditioning company in Dayton, Ohio, oftentimes I say we're successful because more of what we don't do than what we do. In other words, because we don't do everything, we can focus on what we do best and we try to do that better than anyone. And most of the time we do. And that's confidence. Okay, I'm going to get to the ego thing here soon. But that's confidence. Okay, so these kinds of people, like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, many others, um, they're the 1% of the 1%, okay? Um, they're very similar, those two. They, they see things others can't see, and they do things others think is impossible. And they have what's called a zero-based thinking. This means they have the ability to strip away everything except hindsight and use of clarity, which I call common sense. There's a lot of things in business that are just common sense. And, and so many people make it so hard. You see, it's so simple. It's, it's so-called smart people are scared to do it. Steve was not scared to do it. In other words, he was not afraid to get back down to start level zero, ground zero, and, and start all over, and let's do what we do best. Uh, he gave it up, but not out of choice. He gave up uh, Apple, uh, but not out of choice. Like I said, he was out 14 years. They fired him. He hired a CEO, and that CEO fired him, and he was out for about 12 or 14 years, and then he came back. So he was out, but not by choice. But here's what he said. So you talk about giving up something, give up to go up. Here's what he said. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have happened to me. Jobs said in 2005, he started his second company next, which was ultimately acquired by Apple and Jobs became CEO again. Fast forward, this year, they're going to do over $400 billion, like I said, and, uh, and, it, and, provide, and it provides jobs for hundreds of thousands of people today because Steve Jobs went in, started at ground zero, got down to four products, and killed it. And they're providing jobs for about 165,000 people today. Okay. So what are some things we must give up to go up, all right? And first, let me get this out of the way, because I'm extremely passionate about this, because people call me and they say, I want to start a business. Can you give me some pointers? And I always say, yeah, I'll talk to you for a little bit for free and give you a few pointers. And I'll say, what's your status right now? Well, I work for a company. I've been with them for a while, and I'm thinking about leaving that company and um, I have started, you know, I've been doing some side work and I, I have started a little business and I've, you know, been, how long you been doing it? Well, I've been doing it for a couple of years, still working for my main company for a few years. I'll just flat out say, look, if you want to talk to me, quit your job tomorrow and give me a call. And then I'll give you some pointers on how to succeed. Okay. Because if you're working a full-time job and running a business, Give it up. 
I mean, if your goal is to have a real business, give up that job. Either give up that job or quit moonlighting and taking work away from other companies and go to work and continue to work for that person and and do it. I mean, make them money, okay? Or or quit and go out and take a risk and start your own business, a real business, and make it happen. Okay, because you'll never be able to pour 100% of yourself into the business if you're still working for someone else. And like I said, if you don't think you can make it, then stay there, but quit moonlighting and taking work away from real companies because there's a lot more liability for you if you blow a house up or blow something up. I, I, I heard something the other day that some guy that used to work for us Whew. Mediocre, mediocre uh, technician was working at some hospital trying to figure out troubleshooting in a hospital. I mean, a hospital is so far over my head and everyone that works for me's head, it's unreal. That's scary, folks. That's scary. And it's scary if you're trying to moonlight, work for someone else and out there moonlighting, that's scary. If any customer pays you, shame on them. Shame on them. All right, anyway. Uh, so number one, before we even get to the points of what do you got to give up, you first got to give up your job. If you're still working somewhere, give it up and go out there and make things happen. And I told my nephew who might be listening, I told my nephew the other day, he wants to take a leap. He wants to go out on his own uh, in a business. And I, and I flat out told him something that he's probably never heard from anyone else. I said, uh, quit saving money to start a business and just quit your job and go out and start your business, okay? Because you can only save so much money. The longer you're saving money, the less risk you're willing to take. And that's a fact. So let's get on the way here now. Okay, what are some things that we need to give up to go up? And by the way, this is going to be two parts. I can tell you that right now. Uh, this is going to be two parts because part one here is going to be some really good stuff and part two is going to be just as good, okay? So here's what we must give up. Number one, negative thinking and negative self-talk, okay? Anything is possible from now on. That's how you have to think. Anything is possible from now on. There are no bad ideas. There are no bad ideas. The minute you, you start telling yourself, oh, that's not a good idea, I can't do that, then don't be disappointed because you won't be able to do that and who knows if it's a good idea because you'll never try it, okay? So there are no bad ideas and quit saying I can't. We can be our worst critic, our worst inner critic, our only inner critic, but uh, there's a lot of critics out there, but don't be your your don't be an inner critic. Tell yourself positive things. I can do this. I can step out. I can do this. I can make it happen. As a matter of fact, I can do it better than the, the guy I was working for. It's damaging and it will hold you back from going up. Your view of yourself can determine everything. How you view yourself determines everything. And number two, you've got to give up bad habits. You've got to give up bad habits. What's a bad habit? Well, let's talk. We all have them, and they hold us back from going up. They may be difficult to break. I mean, I recall I, I smoked probably for seven years between 15 and uh, 22 or somewhere in there on and off. Um, and I loved them. I, I, loved, I loved the cigarette at the time. I just loved it. And I realized... It was controlling me. And anything that controls you, it's probably a bad habit. Um, so it, it can be broken. And it was hard for me to quit. It really was. It was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done was quit smoking. Um, you know, it sounds simple. Just replace a negative, you know, habit with a positive habit. But it's hard to do. And everybody knows that. But in order for you to go up, you've got to drop some bad habits. You've got you've to um, change the way you talk. You've, you've got to 
you know, change where you go. You got to change who you hang out with. Okay. That, that, those can all be bad habits in there somewhere. Okay. And number three, reading, watching, and listening to trash. Reading, watching, and listening to trash. What we watch, read, and listen to is vital to our success. We have to have a growth mindset. And you're not going to have a grown mindset listening to trash, looking at trash, or watching trash, or whatever. If we if we are what we read, watch, and listen to, what are you? Okay? You've got to get to that next level. And in order to get to the next level, we've got to stop and quit watching and reading and listening to trash. In order to have a growth mindset, we need to think about growth. The growth mindset creates a powerful passion for learning. Okay, we've got to read, we've got to read good things, business growth things, constant. Someone gave me a book the other day. They didn't ask me if I wanted to read it. They just said, here's a book for you to read. And, and it was a really good book. And, and people would have probably loved to read it, but it wasn't my kind of book. And I started to read it and I couldn't get into it. And I was frustrated because this guy gave me a book to read. And now I got to give it back to him. And he's going to say, how do you like it? And I'm, I don't know what I'm going to say, right? But it's just not my kind of book. I've got to read business growth marketing, advertising, branding, growth books. I've got to read something like that. That's my interest. That's what I do. And I know some of you will say, Greg, you got to change it up a little bit. You got to, you know, got to touch, you know, no. I just like to, if I'm going to read and spend time reading, I'm going to read what I love. Okay. So the growth mindset creates a powerful passion for learning. And same way with watching. What do you watch? There's a lot of trash out there. There's a lot of trash on your phone. Be careful what you watch. It's all it all can be very addicting. Very addicting. In today's world, it's easier than ever before. But so be careful. You know, watch things like uh grow how to grow business or how to be more successful or stuff like this. I mean, if it helps you, it helps you. All right, number 4, things that worked before but are no longer viable. Boy, I like this one. You know, I mentioned zero-based thinking earlier to get uh, let go of the failures of the past. In other words, Steve Jobs knew having too many products wasn't good, especially if none of them were floating to the top. That Apple was just creating products because they were Apple, but they were also losing money and they were on the verge of bankruptcy. So it's letting go of failures of the past. If you know something is not going to work because you tried it before and it and it was it wasn't going well, then it's a good sign it probably won't go well again. Um so let go of even what worked in the past. Okay, here's some examples. Calculators, instant cameras, transistor radios. You know, nobody's going to come out with a business for those today. They worked very well in their time, but they're obsolete now. There's things that a phone can replace all three of those. (laughs) So um, an iPhone, a, a smartphone can replace all three of those. So even though they were successful in their day, but they're no, they no longer work today. What got you here won't keep you here. Let go of it. Okay, let go of it. You got to let go of some things that you're hanging on to that aren't working. I go into businesses all the time and I'll ask questions like, how long have you been doing this? Well, we've been doing, my dad did this, my grandpa did this. How's it working for you? Well, it doesn't, I don't, or, or I hate this question. I hate this answer. I don't know. Um, we think it's working pretty good. Well, how long have you had this department over here? How, when did you start this? And to add it to your business. Oh, we started it about five years ago. How's it working for you? Well, we're still trying to get it going. Well, I I got news for you. It's not working. Shut it down. Put it to sleep. Do something. 
What got you here won't keep you here. Let go of it. Number five, this is a good one. The constant need to win. Especially winning at things that don't matter. Arguments over trivial things. A combative attitude only irritates and um, alienates everyone. You're constantly combative. A combative leader is not is not going to do well. Let go of it. Matter of fact, let other people win. You know, you you own the business. You run the place. Let other people win. I, if you ever watched the movie, it reminded me just now, movie, my, one of my favorite classics, Mr. Mom. Okay? Michael Keaton, Terry Garr played in it. I've watched it several times. Can't think of who the, the business owner was running the company that uh, Terry Garr went to work for. But it was all about him. He had a major ego, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But they had this... Uh, they had this um, competitive thing for the company, and it was like an obstacle course. And Terry Gar talked Michael Keaton, who played Jack, into go a fam- it was a family event. But Jack was able to beat the coach, but he fell on purpose at the end because he wanted to save face for his wife, who worked for that company. And then he looked at her and gave her a wink that I I fell on purpose. I could have beat this guy, but he's your boss. But the boss thought he had to win, so he beat everybody. Okay? You don't have to win all the time. It's your business, for goodness sake. All right? And ask yourself, does winning this certain situation provide long-term benefits for me and my business? If not... Let it go. Drop it. Let it go. There are some situations that it's okay to let someone else win. Number six. Using words such as no, but, and however. But and however cancels everything that goes before. A team member comes up with an idea and you say, it's great, but... Maybe you should change this or that about it. Well, in other words, the the idea sucked. That's what you're telling the coworker. Your the idea sucked. Or they say, uh, I told, um, or you say, I totally agree with you, but that means you don't agree with them at all. Or they come up with another great idea, and you say, Well, we can do that, but I'd like to see this or that. You're you're telling them their idea sucks. You're It's stagnation among your company because it's a but and no company, okay? The average toddler hears the word no 400 times a day, according to experts. Many grow up thinking they can't do something big. Now, there are many times you have to tell your child no in order to protect them train them um, in the way they should go and all that kind of stuff. Um, However, some people go a little bit overboard with no. And it's no, 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 no. I'm like the kid, what is he ever going to think is a yes? Give the kid a yes once in a while. Yes. I don't know the study. I didn't have time to do the study, but I guarantee you kids that hear more yes probably achieve more in life. I don't know. All right, number seven, ego. Woo! Everybody has one, right? When startups fail, listen to this. When startups fail, a flawed ego is often the root of the cause. Confidence is a requirement. It drives you to realize your vision and helps you to have the tenacity to pick yourself back up when you hit a roadblock or a bump. It's having faith in your abilities and believing in yourself. That's confidence. But be humble or you shall stumble. Because ego is all about self-interest. It seeks approval, accolades, and validation. 
It's resistant to feedback. In other words, you quit listening. When you got a big ego, you quit listening to other people. Now listen to this. Two out of five CEOs fail within the first 18 months. Why is that? They get a big head, they get a big ego, and they quit listening to people around them and they act like they, can, they know it all. And evidently they don't because two out of five fail. And also one third of those leading Fortune 500, one third, what is that? About 150 or so? One third of five, the Fortune 500 companies don't make it past three years. The whole company fails. One third of them fail. You know why? Because the CEO had a big ego, thought he knew it all, quit list, thought she knew it all, and quit listening to other people. Like I said before, you can learn something from everyone. You can learn something from the uh, top to the bottom. You can learn something from a janitor. There are a lot of smart janitors. And if you read the book, Lead for God's Sake, you'll find out just how smart a janitor is. Okay, number eight. And, and the last one for part one. This is the last one for part one, and we'll have eight more uh, next week. Got to give up relying on you. This is tough for a lot of people. This has something to do with ego, um, but you got in business because you worked hard and you made it happen. Kudos. Very few people can do that. It's a, bre it's a gift. It's a talent. Very few people can start a business from scratch. But if you did, good job. Or if you, small, if you bought a small business and you got it going, good job. And guess what? You may not be able to keep it going. So your gift might have just been able to start up, but you need help to keep it going. What are you saying, Greg? Well, here's what I'm saying. You need to rely on others smarter than you. Yes, they're out there. I know there are a lot of people are out there for me. They're smarter than me, and I want them around me. I want them working for me. I want them on my boards. I want them as my coach. I want them as my advisor. I want them as my mentor. They're out there, and they're extremely smart. And I like them also experienced in business. They're out there. I want to learn from them. I'm a sponge. I want, I want to learn from them. Okay, those were eight good things that we got to quit doing. You got to drop it to go up. Everything I've discussed today requires something you may have never heard of, and it's called strategic, <laughs> easy for me to say, strategic quitting. It's understanding that opportunities cost something. And this concept is in order to pursue one option, we must forego certain others. Okay? It's like choosing to read Think and Grow Rich instead of playing games, video games, or watching Netflix for four hours. You decide which one you want to do. Okay, before we wrap up, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe below. You also can support this podcast by rating and reviewing on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Keep listening because this kind of stuff will change your world in business, make you more successful, and of course, help you sleep better at night. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Greg McAfee Show. No spaces, no underscores. Now be sure to tune in next week because we're gonna watch, we're gonna, we're gonna do part two of this. What do I need to let go of to go up? Okay? So uh, good stuff. And thanks for listening. And as always, carry on and have a great day. <laughs>